steps of the Capitol in the face of uh, the tra crazy travesty that's going on in the news lately with the governor, with Fairfax. Uh, do you have any comments uh, in terms of that? Um, it all stems right from the beginning. I mean, I think their agenda has finally come to head in what they've been trying to do all along. And now everybody can see it plain and simple. We want to kill babies. And right. that's, that's what they're all about. And uh, God's word says, I knew you while you were still in your mother's womb. So that tells us right there when life really begins, God sees it right from the very beginning. So I think he's more of an advocate on what pro-life is all about as far as who deserves life and who should have life. And I don't think you know, our politicians have the right to make that determination anymore. We've defined so many things now by law that uh, were never ours to redefine. But it all comes down to the same thing. But we've got to get back to understanding that God's word is absolute. God's word is truth. God's word said there's life in him and that's the only place where we're going to find life. So if we try to find it outside that, no matter how we try to redefine it or what purpose that we put on it or what spin that we want to have on it to make ourselves feel better about who we are. I mean, let's face it, we've just done nothing more but to give uh, new labels on old sins to feel better about committing them. That's about what's taking place in our culture today. And once we get back to what God's Word says, that when my people humble themselves, seek His face, and turn from our wicked ways, that's when He's going to hear from heaven and He's going to hear in our land. That's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> I would say, uh, so how would you define where life begins? I, I think God, life begins with God's Word, period. In the beginning was God. Genesis 1-1, I think when you go right there, you find out in the beginning was God. That's when life begins. Now, man has put his own determinations on that when life begins. But in God, life has always been because God has always been. Life will always be because God is always going to be. There's no way to change that. That's an irrefutable truth in God's Word that's going to stand no matter what. So for us to be able to define what life is, I mean, we have been placed here in God's confines. He put us here. God made man. He's the one that gave us life to begin with. So when you take a lump of dirt and you breathe life into it and it becomes a living soul, you know, who are we to say however we are, you know, that God has given us a way to procreate and the things that we do, Life begins, in my opinion, right then. I mean, if you decide to do the things that are going to bring about new life, then that life has already begun. There's nothing you can do to stop it, really, in that particular point. Now, once that life begins to get to the point, our abortion clinics and other people that have uh, come up with all these great ideas of how they can you know, manufacture these things to make life so much better for people who need a choice. But the choice has always been clear. God is life, and God has been from the beginning. What other areas in terms of uh, being pro-life in terms of extending that position that we value the sanctity of life, the value of life, if we're children of God, right, life is very important from that, um, into the face of the government, the state, and many times that is not very pro-life in a lot of these practices, like uh, sending uh, us to uh, endless wars, right, we have no business being over there, right, yeah. taking of life, right, that's not very pro-life. Or uh, you could say uh, selective services, uh, if, if your boy doesn't sign up for selective service, he's threatened, his life is threatened by sending him to jail or hundreds of thousands of dollars of fines, right? There's a, or like Obamacare where he threatens uh, like 200 some dollars a, a penalty, which if you don't give him, the government, your tax money, they will threaten your life for that. Yep, I agree all the way around. <laughs> but again, we come back to the very same thing, that you know, God's laws are absolute, God's word. When government was put into place, and the United States of America was the best um, example of that in the whole world. When the United States came into existence, our laws, our way of life, everything that we did when we put into government was based on God's word. And based on God's word, you know, government is not in place to tell us how to live our lives. Government should not be there to say, you know, how I get to spend my nickels. Uh, I understand, you know, taxes. I understand that they need to be. Even Jesus said, render unto Caesar what's Caesar's. But if everything is from God and God made everything, it doesn't really belong to Caesar. Everything belongs to God. I understand. But then bring it back in the way that this world has brought everything together. I do believe that God gave us the ideas of putting things together as far as, I mean, how would government stand if it wasn't supported? There are things that need to be done that need to be taken, just as in the ministry. My livelihood comes from being a minister of God. If it wasn't for people helping me and sending me along the way to keep me going, it wouldn't exist. Would you still have your ministry without a government though? 
Oh, by all means. Yeah. I mean, the Amish do really well <laughs> without a government interfering and telling them what they can, can I do with their lives, with their property, with their with the way they want to teach their right. children, right? I agree with that, but I also believe that there's nothing wrong with having a government as long as we understand. I mean, we've made government into what it should never have been to begin with. Even our Constitution even says so. Our politicians that have been there for longer than you know two years or four years or six years, whatever their term is supposed to be, and if they get reelected for a second term, should never have been more than that. Our politicians were never hired to go into a career of politics. Even the President of the United States, once you serve two terms, he's, he's done. That's it. And they say, well, you know, it's the highest office. What else is after that? But we do have had some presidents who would love, and just recently, just the previous administrations that we had, would love to have been, become the dictator of this country and have been his position forever. So I believe that there are some ways that we do need governing, we do need laws, we do need rules. But if we're not based on God's word, then that's where we fall short. Does you think that a lot of uh, government laws go in the face of God's laws, though, for example? Oh, absolutely. Right. Well, what's, why are we here today? That's why we're here today, right? Exactly so right. you can't really rely on government there to say exactly. that they're here uh, as, as, as standing see, in place or helping to assist with God's right. law. But government should be by the people for the people, and that's where we have fallen short. It's not that government has, you know, they're, they're doing what... I might get in trouble for saying this, but they're doing what devils would do anyway. They're going to have rule. They're going to have run. They want to do things their way. And we have allowed people to get in position and now become almighty money that has come into their hands because of greed, because of all the domination that they have been allowed to have free hand of, because voters don't get out and vote, because people don't stand up and do what we're doing today. That's why government has turned into what it is. Government should be run by the people, not by the politicians. I mean, that's, that was the experiment, right? Yeah. It doesn't seem to be 200 years later that experiment to be working well, right? I think uh, we've tried to see if we could constrain the size of government, constrains uh, the sin of government, you could say, but it doesn't seem to be working. It's very overreaching now. You pay over 50% of your income towards taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And now today they're trying to legislate that it's okay to kill a kid, yep. right? Uh, so I don't think this idea of having politicians that you've never met to dictate your life I think the experiment has failed. I think these will go back to a voluntary thing, like your, your parish or your church community. That's not through a threat of government laws and edicts. That's through God's law that people kind of voluntarily uh, and, and choose to follow, right? I don't think politician was the, was the name that was given in the beginning. It was representatives. It was people that were supposed to represent what the people want and what the people are asking for and what the people know to be right and we're all supposed to be doing it according to what God's Word says first and foremost. That's where we've fallen short. You know, it's okay to have government, but government should not be far-reaching as you said. I agree with that 100%. But the other part of that is that government should be reaching from the outside into where that's going on. We should be dictating to these guys what needs to be done and they should be listening to the people who have the right to say it. Do you think uh, you can still have a government without taxes? No. Well, if it's so, if, if this is something that everybody wants, like you can still have a church, right, without a government. I mean, I'm sure you can still have a church well, with. Uh, maybe tax is not the right thing. I mean, what does God command us to do? God says 10%. Well, no, God, no, God, God said, God said, do not steal. And when you don't have a consensual relationship with government, if you can't, if they say no, you're going to pay your property tax this percent of this year, you don't have a say in that. Right? I, they I come and take, and if you don't give them your money, they foreclose their house and put your I property hear, on sale. I hear what you're saying, but I think that particular view can kind of go just as far to that side as these guys are going to the other side. And you got to be careful trying to find the middle of it. There, there needs to be support. There must be support. You got to have it coming from somewhere. Well, you could do it voluntarily, right? You voluntarily support the church, the charity. The, the church doesn't demand people to give them the money unless they, you know, go to, to, to jail. The government does that. Do when the live, government says... Do you live on volunteerism? Yes. Totally? Uh, in, in terms of, and how, how would you ex explain that? Would Everything hear? funded, yeah, volunteer, yeah. I volunteer in front of my camera, I volunteer to come here, okay. yeah. I, I choose my relationships, they're all consensual. My relationship with the government is not consensual. They tell me what I can, can I do with my body, at least trying to, with my property, right? Uh, with, with my vehicles, the kind of cars I can drive. Uh, in terms of uh, every facet of my life, they dictate, right? Uh, I would I, like to. I would say we could have a free society, great community. There's no government in the Amish community. You can have these kinds of groups without the dictation of a force that comes from government, without the demands that taxation come that's not very pro-life because if I don't give government their, their taxes, they threaten my life. And it's not a very pro-life position to support taxation in that sense. Understandable. Uh, yep. But God's plan, he said 10%. That's what he told the children no, of Israel. No, he, he told Ten Commandments is all he wrote. With his finger, he that's all he wrote. Into this earth, he really? wrote, the do ten, not steal. 
then take me back to the scriptures that's not in Malachi then, where God said, Are you, will a man rob God? You, you say tax, you need to give taxes you, you, to God? No. God said, his word said in Malachi, will a man rob God? And you say, how are you robbing God? And God says, in your tithes and your offerings. Well, uh, tithes and offerings are voluntary, right? Yes. I mean, when you pass the okay. basket right. in the church, so there's no want, okay, threatening you keep, that. There's you no, keep getting ahead of me. You keep getting ahead well, of me. I'm trying. I'm, well, you're going over the place. I believe, I make sure no, I, no. Okay. I said to you earlier that I believe that God's plan, the way he set everything out, is the way that we should be setting our government, our systems, our things that we do. God's had a plan for the church. In order for the church, in order for his ministry, for the Levites at that time to be supported, it was going to be done through the tithes and the offerings that God was bringing in, through the tithes that bringing in from the church, through the offerings that came through them. I believe that we can look at what God's plan is, we can do simply the same thing on this side of it. We can support our guys in government, our representatives. We can take care of them like they need to be taken care of. We don't have to do it by the way they're dictating it by these days, not with 58% taxes or 60 or even some places 90% taxes that they're trying to get now. We don't have to do it that way. But God says, I have a plan, <clears throat> and he laid that plan out. I think we can look at God's plan and we can go by what God's plan right, says. So if, we can if those are voluntary, then yeah. If that's God's plan, right, to consent to voluntary, to that kind of good? I believe to demand taxes from us and demand that we got to do this, demand that it's not right. I agree with you on that. But I do say that there is a still a way that we can provide a decent living for the men and women that are trying to take care of this country, just as we have men and women that are trying to take care of the church of the living God. There we go. And it's all. And I would say that must be done voluntarily. Okay. Well, I, okay. From that standpoint, yeah. I see what you're saying. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. Yes. Cool. <laughs> well, great. But well, that's why I feel like the pro-life position is. I'm pro-life not just from the time the child's in the womb, but every aspect mm -hmm. outside of that when the child grows up into an adult, right? Yeah. And I find that in the face of government that they threaten their life in many of these positions, not just from Obamacare or selective service but you could find in taxes. They demand my life if I don't give them my property, right? Whereas the church asks voluntarily, and people voluntarily contribute. And the church today is the largest philanthropic charitable group in the country because of that, right? So if you could see an organization run voluntarily through that kind of good, why can't you run everything else in such a manner? Good point. <laughs> you know, I, cool. But, All right. <laughs> you know, I, you know, there's... there's it just comes a point that we still got to get to the place to where if you know if we're going to serve god then we'll serve god with everything you know and i think that's where everybody's gotten away from that these days you know and man wants to serve man's own thoughts man's own private ideas we've gotten so many people that are so selfish about what they want and what they expect and now with all the lobbyists and all this stuff that goes on in washington dc everybody can be bought and that and that's 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 terrible right there's you know that kind of, you're talking about volunteers i mean those guys are up there supposedly giving services to doing things and giving this and giving that but then so many people are being bought from it and these are the results that we get from it right and that's where we got to get back to eliminating those things right well, appreciate you coming out. Hey. This is a great conversation. <laughs> Maybe a little more than you're looking for. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank you. a lot.